Well, it's hard to believe this next story is true, but it is. We checked. In just a few hours, an American who loyally served her country is scheduled to be shipped to Italy to go to prison. Sabrina D'Souza is a former State Department employee who also served as an undercover CIA officer. Well, that got her in trouble with Italian authorities several years ago who accused her of assisting in the kidnapping of a radical Islamic cleric called Abu Amar. Italy, the nation that once jailed seismologists for not predicting an earthquake, and they actually did that, has handled D'Souza very roughly. She was convicted of kidnapping in absentia without being present to defend herself. And now she faces imminent extradition from Portugal to serve a four-year prison sentence in Italy. President Obama has granted, meanwhile, 148 pardons and commuted 1,176 sentences, mostly for drug offenses. But so far, he's done nothing at all that we know of to assist D'Souza, who served this country. Well, D'Souza joins us now via Skype from Portugal, where it's close to 3 a.m. Thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Is there anything about the intro that I just read that is false? You are right on the cusp of being extradited. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Starting tomorrow, I have no idea what's going to happen and the conditions under which I'll be when, once I get to Italy. It's horrifying. And considering you've already been convicted in absentia, it doesn't look good and you're facing a prison term. So this all stems that's from the kidnapping last decade mm -hmm. of this man, Abu Amar. Now, you were say you were right. skiing with your son on a ski vacation, a school holiday, when the kidnapping took place. But that decision was not made by you in any case, was it? Oh, absolutely not. And we, none of us had any input into the decision. The narrative at the time was Abu Omar was a dangerous terrorist and had to be taken off the streets of Milan. As it turned out, uh, a year after he was in Egypt, uh, where he was transported, um, he was set free for lack of prosecutable evidence against him. Hmm. So you've been convicted in an Italian court for this, mm -hmm. but your supervisors who made that decision back in Washington or Langley or back in the United States are free to travel to Europe. They've not been convicted. Is that correct? That's correct. And the reason we have state secrets and Glomar and all, and all of this is to make sure that they remain that way. Yes. So the Obama administration, Fox reached out to the State Department to ask, what are you doing to help your former employee? And they said this, quote, the Department of State takes its obligation to assist U.S. citizens overseas seriously. And yet it doesn't seem like they're taking your case seriously at all, are they? Well, the most they've done, uh, the U.S. Embassy in Portugal reached out to me to process me for this extradition, um, you know, uh, get, make sure my travel documents are up to date and uh, sign the privacy waiver. And to me, the notion itself is a little bit surreal, right, considering I'm not going as a typical American citizen who's been convicted of a crime, you know, like drugs or something like that. Uh, and this was an uh, activity that was sanctioned right all the way up to the National Security Council. So why do you, I mean, presumably President Obama could get on the phone and say, I mean, we have military installations in Italy. You know, we do a lot of business with Italy. You may not do this. How's that sound? Has he done anything well, like that that you're aware of? No, I'm not aware of anything like that. And I think uh, one thing, Tucker, is that this entire fallout from this entire rendition has been handled by the CIA completely. The CIA has decided what goes to Congress, what Congress uh, is told, what, not, what they're not told, who gets a pardon, who doesn't, etc. So, um, you know, I don't know how much uh, the president could have weighed in if the director, Brennan, for example, said, well, this is the way we're going to proceed with this particular case or the whole case itself. Um, and I think a large part of this as well is because of the Italian intelligence services. So many of them were convicted. In fact, one of them is the chief of the uh, Italian intelligence service. Uh, and this is kind of uh, also quite outrageous for the Italians to have um, uh, you know, the chief resigned, be convicted over an ill-conceived operation that had little intelligence value. Yes. You must feel betrayed. I feel betrayed as an American just watching you. Could, what do you hope that the newly installed President Trump will do for you? Well, I think um, I'm a little bit optimistic over there just because I've had a very strong advocate in uh, Congressman uh, Pete Hoekstra. And I think one of the things that uh, President-elect Trump or the administration can do is really make sure that we stop this precedent of U.S. Uh, diplomats, U.S. military and intelligence officers being convicted by foreign courts. This case ha requires a proper investigation and accountability, and that needs to take place in Washington, not 
in a foreign court. So I'm of hoping course. this is one thing that uh, the, new, the new administration does look into. If the U.S. government can't even defend its own CIA officers, then we're lost. Sabrina, good luck. I know you're possibly on your way to jail in a few hours. We're going to stay on your story. Good luck to you. Godspeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tucker, for the opportunity. Thank you.